Welcome back to the Flight Brothers. Today we are taking our first look at the new X-Craft ERJ family. X-Craft's ERJ family includes the 135, which is the shortest model, shown here in American Eagle livery, the ERJ 140, which is slightly longer with more passenger capacity, shown here in United Express, the original ERJ 145 model, shown here in the classic American Eagle paint job, as well as the ERJ 145 XR, shown here in Express Jet, and last but not least, the Legacy 650, shown here as Dream Chaser, a business jet. All right, Sim Captains, we've seen the different models. Now let's climb aboard. I'm going to start us out here with the uh, Embraer 135, which is the shortest and smallest of the models. So here we are in the cockpit. I'm going to try and slowly pan our view so that we get a nice view of everything up here. Very nice textures. Look at those seats. Moving armrests. All the little details that make it really look good. Ah, do you notice you can hear the ground power unit out the windows open? That's cool. I hadn't noticed that before. Uh, both windows open. There we go. It got louder. That's great. That's fantastic. Uh, the windows only operate on the ground and stationary. So not going to do that while taxiing. We've got two FMSs. This is a custom FMS built, or sorry, FMC, I guess, uh, for this aircraft. It does not apparently attempt to mimic the actual ERJ. Uh, doesn't mean much to me there because I've never flown an ERJ. And on the right will be the X-Plane default, which uh, if you've ever used that, it's pretty much good for navigation. That's it. This custom one is going to let you do performance data and other aircraft-specific features. All right, let's look upstairs. The overhead, very nicely done. I'm going to mess some things up here just by pulling them, but. Very nice. Guards. Everything is as it should be. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. Let's look at our throttle quadrant. Got that gust lock. And our flaps. Speed brakes. Parking brake. All right, should we go tour the aircraft? Just, uh, I don't want to spoil the fun for you, but I will tell you, the developers had a lot of fun, and I can't avoid showing you this one on the way out here. I highly suggest you read every placard in this aircraft. Um, if this is your sense of humor, it's certainly mine. They're going to crack you up. I have just been completely entertained with the little Easter eggs that are thrown in here. Okay, moving on back, we've got the uh, cabin. Again, it's the shortest cabin. You can open your doors by clicking the click region. You've got to watch how these steps deploy. It just looks great. Actually, they look even better from the outside. And I'm going to kind of run us on back here. that claustrophobic regional jet feeling with your head so close to the roof. Lovely seats, good carpet, safety cards, hilarious safety cards. Read that on your own. 
It's a very nice interior, it really is. Uh, this lab door doesn't operate. You can actually kind of walk through the wall and end up in the cargo compartment. Which is kind of neat. I've never been in the cargo bay of an ERJ. Alright, so here we are back up front. Let's take a quick look at the menu features. Over here on the left they pop out. First one, I've resized a little bit smaller. It's normally about this big. The orange are things that are currently active and uh, the, there's click regions where the arrows are to move things. So let's jump outside so we can see these. And that's why I had this shrunk, so we can see it a little better. All right, our ground equipment includes cones, wheel chocks on the front main, this ground power unit, which does have sound as well if we get rid of it. You notice the sound didn't just go away. You get a nice little shut down sound. Good attention to detail. We can get rid of your cones and wheel chocks. We can close our door. I'm going to actually uh, change this camera view because I just really want you to watch these steps. There we go. It's just a very, very pleasing graphic. Let's jump around to the other side. Uh, I guess we'd call this a service door, perhaps, since you don't really board from this door. Still very good graphics. Everything down to the handle is operating correctly. The handle's textured with appropriate paint wear. It's all just doing what you want it to do. Okay, let's jump to the back. Uh, you notice we have remove before flight ribbons on these engine covers. We have the Embraer engine covers on the front and I was just noticing a moment ago when we were at that door even these probes have their remove before flight ribbons. So let's jump back out because uh, the engine's really the more obvious spot and let's remove those there we go. And you don't actually click the engine. Oh, sorry, that's toggling the door. You click this remove before flight tag down here. There might even be others that I didn't notice yet. The cargo bay door opens up. Oh, lost our menu, sorry. Right here. There we go. Very nice features. Everything you would uh, really want or need. If you're not a big fan of American Eagle, a number of liveries have been included. We've got American Eagle, American Eagle with stripes, that's the old livery, Express Jet, Legacy Dream Chaser. That is the Legacy 650's livery. Interestingly enough, all of these aircraft share one aircraft folder. It's not separate folders for the 135, the 140, the 145. They're all in the same one. So the liveries are set here. And when you get to the uh, 650, you can only use its specific paint job. Oh, I guess down below American is uh, Alitalia. Very nice. All right, let's leave it in American Eagle, because that's the one I kind of prefer at the moment. So when you go to the other models, the other um, commercial models, you can use the same liveries on each of the jets until you get, I believe, to that legacy, which comes in the Dream Chaser. And uh, we might take a tour of that ourselves here in a moment. Before we go checking out the uh, Dream Chaser, uh, I'd just like to point out that these aircraft are all type rated the same, so if you were trained on one, you could fly any of them. They all operate similarly enough for that rating. Uh, I showed you the menu earlier. Next is an FAQ page. This was very wise on the developer's part. It's four pages of just really useful information when you start running into trouble look here uh, there's only one I'm gonna point out for you at the moment because I think it's the thing most likely to trip you up if you weren't expecting it 
there is not an auto throttle on the real ERJ so this is simulating it as the real one however there is a hidden auto throttle here and it's this screw see how there's not a quick zone on this lower screw but there is here beside uh, flight director one if you click that it would activate a hidden auto throttle just for your convenience I personally don't plan on using it it's kind of fun to manage the throttles but that's what this is about there's a little more work for you to monitor when you're doing uh, flight level change speed to make sure that you're not stalling out or uh, porpoising alright so good information there in the FAQs next we've got this FMS it's the same one that's down here you can click on the screen of this one to bring it up you can grab it from the side you can also pop it out right here and you notice that one's actually fixed again another neat idea because if you're flying you know in real life your eyeballs move so you don't have to do this sorry that's probably nauseating to watch in the video so they put this here so that you can have it but it's locked so if I'm looking around on an approach and I want to see my FMS it's actually locked there versus I'm sure you've done this before brought up a floater and then you know you're trying to look and your floaters in the way it's just a really good idea that they had to put that fixed position one there and there are others there's a radio panel also fixed thrust rating you know things you don't necessarily want to have to look down for uh, during some critical flight phases alright I don't want to turn this into a how-to tutorial but I just want to give you a quick bit of information um, in the ERJ family blacked out dark panel is pretty much the normal status so when this thing is all fired up pretty much the lights should be out in flight and that's going to give us pretty much one big quirk here the APU bleed should not be on in flight therefore if it is it will have a light on it now I really wish Embraer had simply made this the word on instead of <laughs> instead of a rectangle like everything else but hey common part bin then so for now let's start by uh, adding some power we're going to use the battery I'm going to go oh, to the menu okay. thank you our GPU is coming on well it is let's go kill that master caution so it's not dinging at us you notice the ICAS is running through some startup procedure here I caught it a little bit late, but it didn't just click on, it actually has a startup like actual computerized devices do. And the reason I'm turning this on, let's activate our GPU. Uh, again, that and the APU bleed, things that would not be on in flight. That's why they get a light for on when everything else has it for off. So looking here, the avionics is off right now. We're going to turn it on, and then I want you to watch how it starts up. Here we go. Avionics masters are on. We should get our test pattern. There it is. It starts booting up. You see how the screens actually have uh, pixelation? Isn't that great? Closer look at these displays. Scroll through your functions here. Change range. Go up here, put it into uh, plan mode. Back to map mode. And uh, with the same wisdom of the pop up FMS, there's also pop ups of these displays. So depending on your configuration, you might find this very useful. Now if you want to get rid of it, just click back in the middle of it, and away it goes. But just some really neat little options that's going to give you there. Uh, again, oh, now that we're powered up, you can see the custom FMC has a 
lot of good features. Still has some information from me playing around earlier. Uh, you can put things a little differently than in the Boeings. You scroll and select through here. But uh, I didn't find it very difficult to use. I read all the documentation on the plane, but not on this part yet. Uh, mostly just because it, it seems pretty intuitive. We've got performance data. V speeds. Page 2. You can input these... Uh, uh, the items in yellow I have input from SimBrief. Performance page 3. So uh, this would be our VREF. Yeah, that's for landing. So really a very aircraft specific, not just a navigational FMC. Let's take a moment to check out the Dream Chaser. That's the livery on our Legacy 650. Just a beautiful business jet. Really nice. Uh, if you look at the specs, this one has some incredible range. Very beautiful aircraft. Oh, got a, a legacy placard up front. Very nice. Very nice. This will be my first time back in the cabin, so we'll see if we find anything interesting together. It is certainly beautiful. We still have our doors, obviously. Very nice. Uh, Moment to see how the other half lives. Well, I'm going to avoid the urge to search too greatly with you, but uh, half the fun of finding Easter eggs is running around using the mouse to look for click regions to see what might do something, and I have found a few that I'm not actually telling you about because I don't want to spoil the fun for you. This is beautiful. This is not the experience that uh, most of us have when we are in an Embraer, that is to be sure. Look at that. Quite a few people don't uh, enjoy their time in Embraer's because they're small, it's not uh, very comfortable for larger people, but it all changes when you're in your private Embraer Legacy 650. What a beautiful cabin. The X-Crafts Embraer series is using the Skunk Crafts updater, which once you have that plug-in, uh, I believe it was very simple to install. I did it quite a while ago, and it uh, can handle a number of different aircraft. I've got it here for the uh, Reality Expansion Pack on my Cessna, my Fly J Sim series, the Aerobass Robin, and now the ERJ family. But you just click it open, you select the ERJ family, you tell it to check for updates or repairs and then it's going to just have you download it. Um, if you're actively in the aircraft like I am right now, it probably will not actually let you update it. So you might need to you know, be in the Cessna or something else. Oh, look at that. We actually do have some, so you get to see that. If I click it, see it says aircraft in use. So all I need to do, load a different aircraft, come back to here, bam, be done in seconds. Very useful utility. It's going to allow the developer to get you updates very quickly and uh, painlessly. One last very important feature, the checklist. It's a beautiful checklist built in made with the input of actual ERJ pilots, I'm told. I'm actually tempted to uh, screenshot these and print them off and actually bind it. It just it looks so good, I want to hold it. Um, I have done a startup using this checklist. Everything went fine. And I think you're going to love it. So let's see some flight footage, and then we're going to wrap this video up. 
Again, we're the Flight Brothers FT, and this is the new XCraft ERJ family. Keep an eye on the channel because we'll have some flight videos and some tutorials coming out shortly. On runway two six. On runway two six. We hope you've enjoyed this quick tour of the new X-Crafts ERJ family as much as we have. Thank you for joining us at the Flight Brothers FT. Plan the flight and fly the plan.